All right, after a few weeks of a hiatus here of videos, we are back with another one. Uh, this is going to be a quick recap on one of my favorite metrics on Santiment, which is called social dominance. And uh, the simple way it works is you are looking for spikes like this or this or these over here as signifiers that the asset you're checking, in this case Ethereum, is getting a lot of discussion relative to its normal rate. So uh, if we were to draw like an average line here, social dominance might be somewhere around like 13, 13.5% for Ethereum during this stretch, uh, kind of the second half of 2022. Um, but these times right here, for example, July 8th to 10th, we saw 24 to 27% of discussions all discussions in crypto uh, being about Ethereum, meaning it is getting a massive amount of attention from that big pie chart of the available discussions happening during that time. Uh, many of you might also just know the simplified version, which is social uh, volume, and that's just the sum of all the discussions. The reason I like social dominance a bit more is it's just taking the percentage of discussions related to one asset and comparing it to the others, uh, regardless of whether there's a lot of talk overall in crypto or very little talk in crypto. This is more of like a ratio. How much attention is this asset getting compared to those assets over there? Um, and I love it because spikes are very often a sign of a price reversal. And we see several, several examples of that, especially in the latter half of 2022, uh, for most of you who've been in crypto for a couple of years at least, you remember fully well the September 15th merge uh, on the Ethereum network. It was a very big deal and, and people were very, were very hyped about it. But leading up to it, there were still several moments um, where there were isolated times that the crowd was very focused on Ethereum. The first one that I highlighted happened between July 8th and 10th, as I mentioned. And this was actually even higher of a ratio of discussion related to Ethereum than uh, the actual merge itself, which happened on the 15th. So what happened here? This was when the proof of uh, stake began getting announced and um, the network was kind of preparing to move um, from POW to POS in preparation for the merge. And actually the reaction was very negative. Partially you can say it was because Ethereum's price actually wasn't doing well. Uh, this is the price relative to Bitcoin re rather than just Ethereum's price versus USD. And I use that because it's a little bit better at reflecting how accurate these social dominance spikes are for this asset rather than just prices moving because Bitcoin's moving up and down. <clears throat> Anyways, so um, from the 8th, 8th to the 10th, there was a lot of talk and actually a lot of negativity because people were worried that the network would get centralized um, and Ethereum would lose a little bit of its luster. That's a very um, commonplace explanation of it. I know there are more uh, technical, technical things I can get into, but that's not what the purpose of this video is. Um, long story short, the proof of stake going on and the preparation and the announcement that happened was met rather negatively. Um, and the price was moving down. And initially, whatever the crowd thinks about the news that is causing these social dominant spikes, they usually push the price either down if they're not happy with the news, or they push prices slightly up if they're very happy with the news. But that effect doesn't last very long because the crowd is not the one that impacts where prices move in the long run. They can move very tiny, tiny little uh, hills, if you will, while the whales are the ones that move mountains. And generally, the reason social dominance works so well is because social dominance is controlled by the crowd, not the whales. The, the 99 point whatever percentage of people holding Ethereum are not whales. And so when they start talking about it, the price moves the opposite direction of the crowd's expectation. So people got very concerned about the proof of stake announcement at this time. And then all of a sudden we see a bottom 
just two days later. And if you were to have bought in here and uh, in time traveled exactly one month, you would have been very happy with your investment while everyone else was complaining about the proof of stake announcement. So we then ride things up. You're a, a counter trader and you went against the grain of what everyone said about Ethereum being centralized, which in hindsight is kind of a ridiculous narrative. Uh, but there are still people out there who believe it. Anyways, August 21st comes about after a bit of a drop and people start to get concerned just about price. And there were other things going on too, but in summary, people are concerned. The price then bottoms after people are starting to panic right here. And then we see one more top. Actually, not a lot of discussion here. We're about a week before the merge and everyone's already talking about the merge pretty consistently. I, if we went back, there would be much lower social dominance, but it was already being talked about by uh, June. So a week before the merge, um, we see a little bit of a top, which is a surprise to some people. And then the merge actually happens. Um, and everyone's hyped and talking about it. They're counting down the blocks. The block occurs. The merge is successful. And then all of a sudden we see a drop as people are celebrating the successful merge. And everyone's going, what happened? This is not what we expected. Um, I thought the merge was going to make Ethereum go to the moon. And here we, I believe the price was in the 1500s at the time of the merge. And then all of a sudden here we are down in the 1200s. Um, and then people start to talk about um, the lack of price action a little bit. We stay flat for a while. And then boom, we finally see a bit of a, a rise here and so on and so forth. That's enough about Ethereum. I just want to show some other smaller altcoins and give examples of how social dominance was so great at predicting where prices would move next. Uh, meme coins are absolutely one of the best examples because they are so sentiment driven. Um, and there was no greater example, in my opinion, than the early March social dominance spike. One right here on March 1st, this was after Shiba Inu uh, blasted off something like a 40% gain in 48-ish hours. Uh, and then we saw a very temporary top. Uh, I know this looks like a blip in the radar, but there were a lot of people who actually decided this is the top for Shiba Inu. I'm going to sell off. So then the discussion dies down just a tiny bit, but it's still way higher than what it was because everyone's talking about this meme coin that had been kind of dormant for a couple of years suddenly reappearing. And then we get a huge, huge skyrocket once again. Uh, I believe this was a little over 80 percent. Uh, in market cap growth, and we see an even bigger social dominance spike uh, during this 12 hour uh, candle. We're seeing about 4.4% of all discussions in crypto related to Shiba Inu. That's massive. Um, and perfectly, we see that the price tops out and it has never recovered since. Um, call that reasons related to Bitcoin's dominance over the past six-ish months or so. Um, but I think Shiba Inu was a very extreme example of that. We even saw a few other tops along the way. Obviously, no social dominance spikes quite this high, but look at them relative to what the discussion rate is in the previous few weeks, and you'll still find some gems. So don't just you know look at this spike and compare it to this. Compare this spike to how people were talking about it the past couple of weeks. And this was a relatively minor one, but it called the top perfectly once again. The cursor lines up perfectly with the highest green candle, and then prices fall. People stop talking about it, and then Shiba Inu gets people excited again with another bit of a mini run. Um, and then social dominance spikes drops down. One more time, it gets people excited. Here in uh, late May, a bigger social dominance spike. This was actually the biggest since that huge run in March. And then we drop down immediately after again. You get the idea. Um, and as I already showed with Ethereum, this isn't just for tops. It can actually happen for bottoms as well. Um, XRP is a prime example with the SEC lawsuit and many people thinking there was a setback in the case, fudding in and out. Um, FOMOing in, of course, this was when 
there was the announcement that uh, the SEC was not successful in proving that XRP should be a security uh, in the U.S., and the price blasts off. Uh, we see huge social dominance spikes here. And as soon as everyone says, well, I guess XRP is, is going to surpass Bitcoin and be the biggest market cap. And then we see a little bit of a drop and people are still talking about it a lot. Just because this isn't as big as this doesn't mean that this huge social dominance of six to 10 percent is uh, nothing, especially compared to all this back here. So you got the idea. There was a lot of talk, big social dominance spike. People still talk about it. It makes another higher high. A smaller social dominance spike finally occurs, and then we top out. Two more quick examples, so I don't beat a dead horse here. Um, Bonk, one of the best performing meme coins here in 2024 at the time of this recording. Huge social dominance spike, very similar to what we saw with Shiba Inu. Here on December 14th and 15th, uh, Bonk is not an asset that gets talked about a lot. Um, at least it was not prior to this spike. And all of a sudden we see it getting almost 6% of all discussions in crypto. Bonk, a, a meme coin that was more or less random uh, to a lot of traders up to this point. And uh, no surprise at all, we see a huge drop down right after the crowd recognizes it and salivates over getting more profits themselves. Um, we see another mini spike here. Remember, don't just compare this spike to the biggest one over the last year. Compare how people are talking about it compared to just the recent weeks, which was very low. So we see this and perfectly the social dominance calls the top and we drop down. Uh, this was more of kind of a mini run, but you get the idea. Bonk, another meme coin, great example. Fetch AI, last example here. Uh, you're seeing a trend. This is definitely more useful for finding tops, but when you do see negative news uh, toward an asset, you know, outside of something like a complete rug pull, the founders have, um, you know, stopped operations. But if it's just some like relatively negative news, but the asset's been around long enough where it can still exist, you'll often see a social dominant spike when prices are dropping and then, uh, all of a sudden it blasts off, kind of like that proof of stake spike for Ethereum back in July of 2022. So one more example, here's Fetch. We see a few examples of social dominance spiking, and then ine we inevitably see a drop a few days later. That actually had a bit of a delay to it. Most of them are a little more precise. This one was closer to the actual top. And then these here were perfect top opportunities when Fetch was really being discussed a lot. Um, and here as well, you had this spike come in and you actually had about a day to react to it before you could have sold your bags while the FOMO was still very high here. And then you see a drop off. So that's just a recap about how social dominance works. I love this metric. It's, it's right up there with MVRV and whale analysis as some of my bread and butter metrics that I look at when I make these types of videos and do our This Week in Crypto weekly live streams every Friday at uh, 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. Shout out to that if you want to catch it. Anyways, that's the video. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you guys next time.